afternoon. Welcome to Marshmallow Land. Seriously, once you start making these homemade marshmallows, I don't reckon you'll ever pick up another packet at the shops again. There's so, oh, sorry, <laughs> they are so simple to make. They're squishy, they're delicious, you can coat them in coconut, you can roll them in tapioca flour or anything that you please, make them into Rocky Road. Just seriously, stay here, hit subscribe now so that you don't miss any more of my videos and let me show you just how simple making your own homemade marshmallows is. If you can see me, give me a little like. And let me know, I'm really interested because I'm going to take this one or two ways and I want to know from you which way it is you want to see. Do you want me to make white marshmallows or pink marshmallows? There's a little comment box there at the bottom. Uh, it looks like a little rectangle with a little bit down the bottom. Hit it in there and let me know, do you want pink or do you want white? Alright, well, I'm going to turn my thermomix on because I tend to make these marshmallows in my Thermomix. The reason I love making them in my Thermomix is because I can control the temperature. And one of the key ingredients that you're gonna be using to make your marshmallows is raw honey. And I find, um, because it doesn't have, you know, all the crap of it being uh, heated, and I wanna keep all of the goodness in there, I try and just keep um, the temperature quite low. And I find that I can do that best in my Thermomix. But don't worry, still hang around because I'll definitely talk you through at the different stages how you can also make this even with hand beaters. Seriously, don't let not having this machine be one of the reasons that you don't give these a go. All right, so what do you need first? Well, you need a set of scales. And again, it's in my Thermomix, so I'm just gonna turn those on. And you're after one cup of water. Of course, goes without saying, try and get the filtered stuff. They um, always use filtered water. Absolutely, you can use the tap stuff if you feel more comfortable with that. The only reason I guess I say that I'm trying to do this is when we're using the tap water, there's chlorine in it, right? That's what we have to do from a national level to make sure that our water is safe. But when you're putting in raw honey with all of these amazing health benefits that are in it, they can sort of go a little bit fighting with each other. So, I like to use the filtered stuff. And next you need is some gelatin. What the gelatin is going to do is this is what is going to set your marshmallow, right? This is what is going to make it light and fluffy. Um, I love using gelatin. Uh, and I'm sure I'll link up actually for you guys in the description at the bottom that you've seen me make my gummies. And if you're following me on Instagram, I am Stacey Claire over there. Make sure you do follow along. You'll see that I pretty much make gummies nearly every single week. And the key ingredient is this gelatin. It is so high in protein. It is so brilliant for our joints, for our gut, for everything. I absolutely love it. Alrighty, so let me show you what I've done there. In my water, I have just put in, there we go, the gelatin. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a mix like this. I always just use my spoon. Why? Let me pull you in closer there, is I'm just trying to bloom it. So if you ever see those fancy words of bloom your gelatin, all that is basically doing is just mixing your water with your gelatin so that you don't end up with really big clumps. It's definitely not what you want in your um, marshmallows. And then what we do next is we're trying to create some air in our marshmallows because that's what gives it its light fluffiness. So the way that I do that is I use on my Thermomix this butterfly hook and I whack that in now. And it goes. And the next thing I need, oh, I should do this. So I've got my gelatin in there that is bloomed and that is done. And the next thing I need is some salt. So just a really good pinch of salt. Sort of for the same reasons that, you know, when you're making your egg whites and you use your salt 
in order to get it lovely and fluffy. It's exactly the same. And the next part you want is honey. So it calls for 200 grams of honey. And again, I'll make sure that in the description I write down the exact quantities that you need. Um, you can substitute this. Let me grab back out that gelatin because I'm just about finished this honey pot. I want to get all the last bits of it. Um, you can absolutely switch this in for a different sugar. So if you like say maple syrup, you can do that. I've done it with rice malt syrup as well. The only thing that you'll start to find is that it isn't as um, dense. I find that the honey really gives it a great thickness. So I'm at 115 grams and I need to get it up to 200. What's that? Whoa, a bit too much. Okay. Oh, yum. Perfection. All right, I'm at 200. Um, yeah, so absolutely maple syrup you, you can do this with. You can do it with rice malt syrup as well. And next, you're wanting to slowly heat it. And I'll talk to you more about this in a sec. I'll just get this going. So I'm putting my lid in. I'm putting on a basket as well because... I don't want the air to, uh, like I want this to be able to get out, right? So I don't want it to be in there and really struggle um, and start like not letting the heat out. Now, I want to talk to you about the temperatures that you can use. When you're wanting to make your marshmallows soft and fluffy like this, Mine are really soft and fluffy. Mine are slightly cream colour. I was practising a few different um, flavours in it. Usually, if you're making them just plain, they will be a lot whiter than this. So don't fear looking at that being like, oh, Stace, are not super white. You know, I want my kids to be really on board with it. I bet they will. This has, I think, about six of these freezer-dried strawberries that I processed into it. Um, for flavoring so that's why it's gone cream so if you want it nice and fluffy like this I put my temperature on for 10 minutes uh, sorry my my speed on for 10 minutes at 50 degrees and I just have it going around at speed one the reason I like doing that at 50 degrees is sort of what I was talking about before is that when you go to the expense of buying raw honey, um, you want to make sure that you're keeping all of the goodness in there. So I don't want to be overheating it, which is why I love this. And basically all I'm doing now is just making sure that the gelatin is melted with the honey. If you want to make marshmallows that will be brilliant on a fire to toast them yourself, this is the spot now that you build in some more um, body to your uh, marshmallows. And the way that you do that is you heat the honey to a higher heat. So you actually go for 15 minutes at this stage at 120 degrees, the same speed, just nice and slow. You just basically need it to be turning around, which is everything I can see it doing right now that's what will get that body in so you can choose and again don't worry this is all going to be here in the description um you will catch it there when it finishes off i'm going to show it to you now because i did prepare one earlier let me get you in here see this now all of the gelatin is melted and it's beautiful and runny so it's not that thick sort of honey that you saw before it is really quite thin and runny. And now what we want to do is start adding in some, uh, we want to start adding in some lightness to it. So in your Thermomix, keep your little tool in. And what you want to do now, I'm just going to stop this one because I can come back to it later. And trust me, I will. <laughs> Uh, my kids will be so excited that I'm making so much marshmallows. Is that now you want to get in some fluffiness to it. So again, the lid goes on. You're wanting to use a basket rather than putting the clogging at the top of it on because you're trying to aerate this. 
change your speed over and what do I have it for 12 minutes at speed 4 and you're not worrying about temperature anymore so you drop the temperature down to nothing and this is going to start going so it's going to be 12 minutes at speed 4 with no temperature and you're probably wondering Stace and I'm actually going to bring you over here a little bit more because I don't want that to be too loud. You're probably wondering, well, when can I start adding flavouring into this? Well, when do we do that? Is after it starts getting a little bit further along. I always just give it like another, like a minute or two till it starts getting aerated. Things I love putting in is vanilla. If you want to add colour. Let me pull you in here now so you can start to see it changing colour. See there? It's starting to get lighter in colour, right? And it's starting, I'm just going to bring over here a bit more so it's not too loud for you. Um, It's basically what it is doing now is that you're aerating it. So if you decide to make these, and I so hope you do with the kids, and you start going, oh, Stace, like they're not fluffy enough. The great thing about making marshmallows is all that you need to do is just keep going with it. If it hasn't worked and it's not fluffy enough, whack it back on. Get it up on that higher speeds because you're turning around your whisk. How do you add colour? How do you add flavour? Well. You can start adding in some of this. So this is a cherry red one, and I'm going to do that in a sec with you guys. And this is what I use to add flavour. So these are freezer-dried strawberries. You can also get things, um, and I love buying these at the Source Bog Foods here in Australia. You can get them on iHerb if you're um, not in Australia. You can buy things like blue algae. Sounds weird. It's dust, and it's really bright blue. You put in a tiny bit of that powder, just the same amount of like salt that we pinched, and it is incredible. It turns a bright blue. You can buy beetroot powder, and you can whack those in as well. You could even put in like raw cacao powder if you want to colour these as well. I love making these marshmallows, especially when I'm making the kids' lunch boxes. Uh, sorry, not lunch boxes. Their birthday cakes because I can choose the colours and I can change them around. All right, let's go and check in on that marshmallow. And we're going to add in some of this food dye. So I reckon we need a pink. All right. You can see it's working already. Leave me a little thumbs up if you can see that, that it's really starting to get fluffy there. So what I'm going to do now is because it's kicking along, I, I know that there's... Um, weight in it, there's life there. What I will do, so I'm just going to grab a knife. I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla in, just through the top. That's it. And I'm going to add in some food colouring too. I don't know how much of this I've actually got left. Really not much. Starting to change a little bit of colour. <laughs> I might just see if I've got some more colour in the fridge because I want to add in to show you just how fun you can make these. Awesome. I've got some purple. Look amazing! Come on in! Can you see that, how it's changed its colour? Brilliant. And we're only halfway. So that's about the time that you want to be adding in your flavours and your food colouring. Now let's chat about if you don't have a Thermomix, how do you work this? Because you absolutely can. Right, what do you need? Well, you need to heat up that gelatin 
and the honey together. Like what I did at the start there, I was talking about monitoring the temperature because that's what's so brilliant about the Thermomix is that I can monitor it, right? That's great. When you're doing it on your cooktop, basically just adding um, your, you'll go ahead and you'll bloom your gelatin and you half your water together, set it aside. The other half of a cup of water that you use, do that with the um, honey. And what you're doing there is you're basically just trying to make the honey nearly like an imitation glucose syrup. You know when you see in the old days they make uh, their confectionery and they really make it sugary like, it's really runny. That's what you're doing with your honey. Heat that and then what you do next is you grab your KitchenAid or maybe you've got hand mixers and put in there your gelatin mixture. I give it a little bit of a turn around just to make sure it's broken up, you know, sort of what I was doing there with my, uh, my spoon, just making sure that it is well moved about. And then you start very slowly drizzling in your honey mixture with it going full ball because of that same principle we were talking about just then is that you need to make sure that you are constantly aerating your uh, marshmallows. And once it's done, I leave it running for about another 10 minutes and you will notice it is so cool that like the whole KitchenAid bowl fills. It's just like absolutely amazing. All right, let's check it out again. Wow! Can you see the color there? Let me know with a little thumbs up. You can see there's a little bit of vanilla still on the side. Amazing. We've got five minutes to go. So, with five minutes to go, what are we going to do? Well, we need to line it. So, we might just waste not, want not. I'm going to reuse this container. Let me pull you back here because I really don't want you to get too much buzzing <laughs> of that noise. I just use a glass Pyrex. You can use any shape container. What you can also use, and I was thinking about this just before, let me pull these out, is these are my silicon trays that I make gummies in. And again, if you want to see how I make gummies, just go through the description there. Um, I will link it up of how I make gummies and be sure to head over and follow me on Instagram. I'm Stacey Claire there because I am always sharing stories of what I'm making and every single week I'm making a different gummy flavor. So if you're really into eating some gut healing stuff, which these marshmallows are because you're putting in gelatin, which helps heal the gut lining, you're having raw honey, which is brilliant, is antibacterial, it is so fantastic for us and boosting our immune system. You'll love to follow along with those. Anywho, back to what I was saying is, is that you could also pour your marshmallows into these little silicon trays. How fun is that? You can have different shapes. But by all means, and come on in now because that one's just about to finish, is that you can do it in a glass tray. I always line mine with parchment paper. I just find that that is then easier for it to get out, right? But using, you know, if you want to chop it up, Let's have one last look. We've got three minutes to go on the clock. See it there? <coughs> it's getting pretty close to the top, isn't it? <laughs> Which is brilliant. And I want it to basically have that time. This isn't the kind of mixture, um, this marshmallow one, where you go, oh, look, it's grown, it's grown. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. You want to keep pumping this air into it so that it gets its lightness that it holds itself together as a structure. It is so important that you do that. So if you're making this in your KitchenAid, sorry, I'll come back just so it's not too loud for you. If you're making it in your KitchenAid, that's also a principle you wanna keep in mind. You're really looking for the consistency of um, really like, uh, like thick egg whites. Tell me though in the comments, because I can see there's a bunch of you online, are you going to give this a go in your Thermomix or actually are you going to give it a go in your kitchen?
stain or with hand blenders. Um, I'm just interested, yeah, to know which one you're going to do. To chop it up, because let's fast forward it and we'll put it in here and I'll talk to you about what you do with it after that. I find good old kitchen scissors is the best. Look at this marshmallow! So exciting! And all you're going to do is literally just chop them. And you might want to create different shapes with this. You, know, like you might want to do really, really, oh, let's see, I've got some of the strawberry on it. Like some really thin lines with it like that. Choose how, oh my gosh, so good, how best you think that your kids are going to love them. I'll show you as well how you can roll them in coconut if that's what you'd like to do or if you um, want to roll them in like a powder because that's how you get yours. All you do is you chop these up just as is, get a little plate um, with like some tapioca flour. Actually, let me do that now because I've still got a minute to go. This is my tapioca, and then you can also do it with some desiccated coconut. So delicious, and I wonder like how beautiful the colours are gonna look. And this one, when you're doing different colourings. You might want to even add some food colouring through your desiccated coconut, and then you're rolling your marshmallows in those. How fun would that be for the kids? Did you hear the word marshmallows? Try one. You tell me how good it is. Huh. Do you want a marshmallow too, darling? I think my kids heard me talking about marshmallows. <laughs> okay. So what you could do here is you could just roll it in your coconut like this, and you get all the gorgeous coconut over it. You can also do it in tapioca, which I'll show you in a sec. Excuse me, darling. Um, okay, so next you've got is, it's ready to go, sorry. Um, it's ready to go the glass container with it and the paper. And this is just finished. Woohoo! Oh my gosh! Guys, look at this! Look at the colour! The colour of Stacey's shirt. That's all I wanted to wear this one today for you. And all you do, let's make it easy. In it goes. And actually, I want to have a play with you guys with these here. Just going to make sure. Sorry, I'm just going to adjust the camera so you can see everything that I'm doing right now. Yeah. You said it a bit funny. Do you want another one too, darling? This is yum. Yum or like triple yum? Triple yum. Triple yum. Hope you guys can hear that. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll it up. I'm gonna put some of this in these. What do you reckon, guys? See if we can make. It's a bit full. Yeah, that first one was. But you know what I reckon we could do is if I use a knife. How fun would these be, like our jellies, making different shapes for them? What um, marshmallow colours have I done before yeah, that you've loved? Green. Green, yeah. Blue. blue. My favourite was when you did black. I did do black. Good remembering. I, I don't remember the black. You don't remember the black? I remember the bright blue. I used the algae. And to make the black one, I used a little bit of black charcoal as well as some black food coloring i love the brand hops for the food coloring and i'll show you that in a sec guys it's a natural one here in australia it's really easy to get online from their website their family business you won't find it in supermarkets um but yeah spend that extra money because then you'll be like brilliant you know no pickle at all making these fun flavors of marshmallows 
with all of these colors knowing that you know what the sugars are right because that's the thing of when you buy marshmallows I was even looking at like a few of them the other day because my little lady like absolutely loves them um, she's having a sleep at the moment but she's she's two and my husband said oh look Stace they say they're vegan and I'm like how are these vegan like how are they making it and it was just all of these ingredients that we just could not even pronounce and I'm all for having sugar and, and that stuff. I think there's absolutely time and place for it. But wouldn't it be fun with the kids being off school at the moment and all of this crazy corona that we've got going on, that if this was, you know, one of their rewards, if this was something fun, oh my God. <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna to wanna to take over getting this out. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, yeah, like how fun would it be if this is what their reward is? Because every single time you'd be like, awesome, get that raw honey in. That's going to help keep the colds at bay. Great. Every time you're eating the honey, you're having it with some gelatin, which is a really great source of protein so that your blood sugar levels aren't going to go up and, and drop down. This is how I do it in the bigger container. See it just like that. So nothing fancy, just get it into whatever works for you. And then into the fridge to set for an hour at least. So this might be something, oh wow, look at these. These just all went out to their size. Remember, you might have heard my son say, mama, they're a bit big. But look, they're flattened out. How good's that? I'll put that one into it there. Oh wow, I'm so excited to see how these ones turn out. Aren't they cute? Um, but yeah, into the fridge. Don't be tempted because Stace has. I'm always here for you guys trying out a recipe a hundred billion times to make sure that I can troubleshoot it for you. And something I did do to try and speed things up is I put it in the freezer and my darlings, it went absolutely flat. So... Lesson learned, don't do that. Pop it in the fridge and give these a go. Like, they're so delicious. I'll show you them with the tapioca flour. I bet these will look really fun. Oh. I'll put these here and I'll get them in the fridge in a sec. I often as well, I should say, I know we're talking about making snacks now, but um, whenever, like my girlfriends and I, we have birthday parties for the kids. We always bring a plate. Like all of us are like, okay, what am I bringing? And the two things <laughs> that my girlfriends always ask me to bring is either marshmallows and they tell me the theme, like the color for it or fruit leather. Um, and again, I'll link up in the description here, my fruit leather video here on YouTube. It's 120,000 people that have watched <laughs> that video which is so fun it's a mango one and it's like the easiest thing to make so definitely um, you know if you are having a celebration and you're like what can I make that's a little bit fun that's not really labor intensive because I'm kind of for that because the, the extent of it was having that on and you can be doing that while you're doing 10 hundred other things right that's what I love rather than having to man the oven I always put my hand up you know to make these all right so with some tapioca just like that. Oh. Look at it. Like they're like proper marshmallows. Oh. Give me some love. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some yums in the comments. Oh my gosh. These are so cool. So I would love for you to make these. Be sure to hit subscribe here on YouTube. I'm going to be in here live every day at 2 o'clock showing you a different snack recipe you can make with your babes. And be sure to check out the playlist. I'll link it below because I've been in here making stuffed dates. Holy moly, that's been the most popular recipe. Peanut butter stuffed dates. Like, it is simple. Yesterday I showed you how to make solid, salted caramel popcorn. It's a thing, and of course, because you're here with Stace, it is quick, it is simple, it is hacked alert. 
that are eating those, slaving over the stove um, with that one. And then there's a few other, there's banana bites. There's so many. So use that description box below um, and check out all of these other recipes and be sure to subscribe. And hey, if you love this and you're like, yeah, I'm going to make some marshmallows, snap a photo for me and tag me in it on Instagram. I'm Stacey Claire there. And as well on Facebook, I'm Stacey Claire there as well. I want to see what you think. And oh, <laughs> promise me you'll make these because I've got all that delicious vanilla -y taste in my mouth <gasps> from these gorgeous marshmallows. And look, they're already starting to set. You're going to love them. Alrighty, I'll see you in here tomorrow. Bye, guys.